Once upon a time, in a land far, far away from here, lived a little girl who was very different from all the other children. And she believed that her imagination had special powers and that she could make things happen with it. She grew up in a school between kind Mrs. Honey and a whole load of trench balls. The little girl had very busy parents, and so her favorite moments as a child were in school where she was allowed to paint blue, blue skies and play the lead character of Snow White, even though the little girl was at white. But her favourite moments of all were in the summertime when Mrs. Honey would take the classroom into the woods to play. And it was there in those woods that that little girl and Mrs. Honey encouraged her to believe in the power of her imagination. That she would run through those trees so free and unafraid as if they were forests, searching for Hansel and Gretel's gingerbread house, and when she would find it, she would take little pieces of pink cotton candy and lemon window planes. Now, if you may have guessed, that little girl was me. And it turned out that I did have special powers, and they were a neurodivergence. And for anyone who's not familiar with what neurodivergence means, basically I've got ADHD along with many other things. And I've also been back to those woods since, and believe me, it's no school woods. It's just the school's tiniest little backyard. And my real life Mrs. Honey did make me play Snow White, even though I really didn't want to, when she had a long line of other kids that would have happily taken that role, and who I believed should play that role because they looked more like Snow White than me. But Mrs. Honey chose me. And the power of that one act for me changed my life. It taught me that there is not one way to do things. And even though my Mrs. Honey was only with me for a very short period of my childhood experience, I carried her encouragement with me for the next 35 years of my life to this day, where I'm standing in front of all of you to talk about my superpower. And that my Mrs. Honey is an example of why it's so important for educators to recognize and to support neurodivergence in children at early stages. I'm proud, unapologetically, and unashamedly neurodivergent. It itself has never been a hindrance, but the challenge has been for the education and the business sector to understand it and to create the systems where people in neurodivergence can be supported, myself included. Even though I struggled to read and write at school, my neurodivergence wasn't picked up, which I still really struggle to understand to this day. I have managed to try, in spite of the education system not understanding it, I was punished throughout my education because of it. However, I'm here today because I believe if, the educa if the educators in the business world can recognize and support it, it can be a massive asset. Neurodivergence is not a bad thing. It's time for us to come together and to create a system where people with neurodivergence can thrive because of it and not in spite of it. A little bit about me. I came from very humble beginnings. The child of Pakistani immigrants, we were incredibly poor. And even though I was young, I knew the only way out of poverty for a kid like me was through the education system. However, I really struggled in school. I didn't understand why I was struggling. My parents didn't. Neither did the educators. However, my superpower was always coming to my rescue. And even though I didn't know how to read, English was always one of my favorite subjects at school. And I loved listening to all of the other kids read stories. And my imagination was so great for creating original stories, always with a unique anti-hero, a new unique protagonist, the new normal. They were always outside of the box. Sometimes my, ca my characters, especially my cartoons, were considered a little too controversial, and so they did backfire on me from time to time. Whilst my grandma might have been atrocious, I was incredibly lucky. 
I had an English teacher, my Mrs. Honey number two, who recognised that whilst the, whilst my grammar might have been atrocious, the underlying tone of my stories were one of emotion. And she said that they were remarkable, and she encouraged me. My parents, on the other hand, were told, she's not very bright, a daydreamer, a troublemaker, just a barrage of negative messages that really did affect my confidence growing up as a kid. It's already hard enough when you know that there's something different about you without being made to feel that that difference is eventually going to lead to your downfall. In the words of the great American writer William Faulkner, who once said, you cannot swim for new horizons until you have the courage to lose sight of the shore. And so I decided that I was going to swim. And even though my Mrs. Honey's guidance was no longer with me, what she had taught me was that I had a powerful part to play and that I could play a lead character. And that was still very much with me. Bearing in mind, I was completely undiagnosed through my teens and my 20s. And so I did pass my GCSEs, then my A-levels. Then I graduated from the prestigious university, Goldsmith College, with a degree. God and I only know how I managed to get through that level of education without knowing how to read. I then crawled my way onto the corporate ladder using the main survival skills that school had taught me, which was that I had learned that I needed to be cool, calm, powerful. But most of all, what school had taught me was that I needed to be relentless in order to succeed. And I was determined to prove everyone wrong, and um, my Mrs. Honey, right. I have worked for some of the biggest corporations out there, and I was very fortunate to work in the technology sector, where I experienced firsthand from the game-changing products that people like Steve Jobs made by developing easy to use and intuitive or what the tech world calls as user-friendly products that helped me manage my neurodivergence. And then I saw the investment that these tech companies were making on testing their products on people like me. And I was really fascinated. Why are they doing this? Because they understand that if somebody like me can use their products, then anyone can. So it's a really surefire way of making sure that that computer doesn't say no. And guess what? The best tech companies right now, as we speak, are already testing their products on people with neurodivergence, but they're ahead of the curve. And there is a lot more to be done, and we all need to catch up with them. I have worked for some of the biggest corporations, JP Morgan, Accenture, Barclays, you name it, I've probably been there. I even got a gig on TV. I have appeared to be thriving despite my issues, but inside, the insecurity was still me really tearing at me inside. And I wasn't really being my authentic self. I got jobs, but never promotions. I set up a business that soared, but I had no idea how to scale it. And I was masking my issues by overcompensating and just generally being socially awkward and telling really good jokes. And I then took a very public firing. You might have seen it for making too many mistakes. And I'm here today because those corporates need to change and they need to start supporting and enforcing their policies and their regulations around offering assistance to neurodivergent people so that they can, so that they've got the right assistance in order that they can succeed. Those negative messages for me had finally caught up with me. And even though I knew I was resilient and robust, working for a decade and owning my own business in one of the toughest, most competitive sectors in the world as a young woman in business, had finally taken a mental toll on my health and well-being. Not only was I suffering from depression and anxiety, but I had developed a very serious eating disorder that had taken over my life. And it was on that journey, battling through anorexia, that I landed up on my ass in therapy. I was incredibly lucky. 
I had a therapist that spoke to me about neurodiversity and ADHD in particular and the link between these two and eating disorders in girls and women. And she felt I was exhibiting symptoms of depression and anxiety and she encouraged me to get tested. I finally undertook an assessment 34 years late. I found that not only was it incredibly expensive, but I had ADHD, a memory problem, dyslexia, dyspraxia. I was like a high functioning goldfish. But when I got that diagnosis, the overriding emotion for me was one of sheer relief because it all started to make sense. I started to make sense. And it was a game changer of that di diagnosis because for the first time in my life, I knew that I had nothing to feel ashamed of or hide anymore. I also started looking into some of the strengths of it. So it wasn't just focused on all of the negative messages that I was receiving. So ADHD gives me extra energy. I can process information and absorb concepts fast. I do things at speed and I have unbridled creativity. And because my style is unorthodox, I come up with very unconventional solutions. And for the first time in my life, I was aware of not only my limitations, but my strengths as well. In the months that followed, I set up a fusion dessert business, Gourmet Mitai, my baby, you can all order online. <laughs> and I worked for JP Morgan and applied and was accepted on to The Apprentice um, um, to champion neurodivergence in business. I have finally managed to turn my nemesis, the dyslexia and the dyspraxia, into a force for good. And I'm standing here in front of all of you today because I believe if the educators and the workplace can recognize and support neurodivergence in people like me coming up through the education system, uh, they can go on to achieve extraordinary things. And Neurodiversity can manifest in many different ways as well. So it's not just the ADHD. So I have something called visual spatial awareness, which means that I have no concept of space. So sometimes I can stand way too close to people without realizing it. And ladies and gentlemen, if I am standing too close to you, it doesn't necessarily mean that I like you like that. So I finally managed to turn the nemesis, the, new, the ADHD and the dyslexia into a force for good. I also set up a business to help navigate the challenges of neurodivergence in the corporate sector and the education um, sector to help employees and the workplace to basically create the correct environment and to make reasonable adjustments as well for people with neurodivergence. Um, I petitioned Parliament to ensure that all teachers get training on how to support symptoms of neurodivergence in children at early stages because I believe that's critical to the welfare of a child going on to maximizing their potential. I am here today because I believe that if the education sector and the workplace can recognize it and support it, Children could go on to achieve extraordinary things um, and that they won't need to hide or feel ashamed anymore. There are thousands, maybe tens of thousands of children and adults who have suffered and are suffering as I have. And it's time for us to stop it. I understand that my journey has been extremely challenging. And yet I also know that I've been extremely lucky to meet my Mrs. Honey along the way. And I still had to fight my way through a system that would have happily left me behind. In fact, kids that wasn't quite right enough. And I also know how expensive that diagnosis is as well, because there's no way that my parents would have had the money to get me diagnosed had they known that I was neurodivergent. But please, 
Let us not forget those children that need that extra financial support to access a privilege that should be a basic right for all children, irrespective of background or class. It is time for us to come together and to create a system where people with neurodivergence can thrive because of it and not in spite of it. And I'm going to finish off by doing things backwards. Um, I didn't use my slides so far, so I'm going to finish off by using my favourite. What Einstein wants to do with it? Einstein once said that everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it's going to spend its whole life believing that it's stupid. I, for one, think that that is incredibly powerful, and it is time for us to make neurodivergence something that is accessible and people with neurodiversity can be supported in business and the corporate sector. Thank you very much.